uh, number three for Bio 2060. And today's lab is titled Selected Blood Tests. And what we're going to do is a pair of blood tests. One of them is um, blood typing. That's the big one. And the other one is the hematocrit. So blood type. All right, everybody's got a blood type. You might know your blood type. Generally, we think of blood type in terms of a letter and a symbol. And those are actually two separate entities. There is always going to be a letter and there is going to be a symbol. And the two things actually have nothing to do with one another. Our varieties of things we can have for each are as follows. So for the letter, we could have A, we could have B, we could have A, B, or we could have O. And then for the symbol, we got plus and we got minus. And these are actually two separate components here, okay? The letter and the symbol. Now, what I want to do first of all is talk about the letter of the blood type. And real quick, why is blood type even important? Well, if you have to get blood from someone, it's really important you have the same blood type. If you have a different blood type and you get a blood donation of that, if you get a blood donation of a different blood type, your immune system will see that new blood as being foreign and start to attack and kill those red blood cells in it, and that can have drastic, even fatal consequences. All right, so let's talk about blood typing, talking about the letter first, symbol second. Okay, what I've got here are four different red blood cells. Remember, red blood cells are our most abundant blood cell, our most abundant formed element, most abundant cell in the body, in fact. Our red blood cells have no nucleus. They have that biconcave disc shape. They're stuffed with hemoglobin for oxygen transport. But for our purposes today, what's really important is red blood cells are going to have proteins on their surface. So red blood cells are going to have these surface proteins. And these surface proteins are often referred to as antigens. So if we're talking about red blood cell antigens, we're talking about the proteins on their surface. Now there's actually a whole bunch of different antigens that red blood cells can have on their surface. But we're going to talk just about a few of them. There is an antigen called antigen A. There is also one that is called antigen B. There's a third one that we're going to deal with later, but not right now. For now, we're going to deal with antigen A and antigen B. Check out this little purple circle right here. This guy right here, that is antigen A. All right, that is antigen A. This little blue-ish, greenish, diamond right here, that guy is antigen B. Now, on my four different red blood cells here. Notice I have a different set of antigens on each one. On my first red blood cell, he only has A. He has no B. Therefore, my first guy here is blood type A because he has the A antigen on his red blood cells. My second guy here, notice he has just the B antigen. So my second guy, he is type B. So no A, but the B antigen is present, makes him type B. Number three, my third one here. He's got both the A antigen and the B antigen. So this guy is blood type AB. When you have both of them. Lastly, this dude has neither A nor B, and kind of appropriately, he's type O. Nothing, right? Neither A nor B. So these are my four 
basic letters that I can have in my blood type. Remember, blood type is a letter and a symbol. You can be type A, you can be type B, type AB, or type O. If you're type A, it means you have the A antigen, but not the B. If you're type B, you got the B antigen, but not the A. If you have both antigens, you're type AB. If you have neither A nor B, you're type O. All right, excellent. All right, now we're gonna add something else to the mix here. What we are going to add to the mix right here are these things called antibodies which exist in your plasma. And antibodies are immune proteins. So antibodies in general are immune proteins. Antibodies are immune proteins. And what antibodies do is they are going to attack, and I'm putting the word attack in quotes, because we're just using that term sort of loosely right now. Antibodies are going to attack foreign, foreign, that's a G right there, foreign antigens. So antibodies attack foreign antigens. All right, write that down. Antibodies are immune proteins or your plasma. They attack foreign antigens. Okay, we got our first guy up here. Remember, our first guy, he was type A. What that means is that he has red blood cells with the A antigen, but not the B. So the B antigen would be foreign to him. So his antibodies in his plasma are called anti-B antibodies. And what they're going to do is they're going to attack, and again, I'll put that in quote marks, they're going to attack a specific antigen. In this case, they're attacking that B antigen. So if your blood type A, you have A antigens on your red blood cells, and anti-B antibodies in your plasma. All right, moving on to our second individual here, the second person, they are type B. So they've got the B antigen on their red blood cells, but the A antigen would be foreign to them. So check it out. They've got anti-A antibodies. And what are anti-A antibodies going to do? Anti-A antibodies are going to attack the A antigen. Fantastic. Our third person here, they were blood type AB. So they had both the A and the B antigens on their surface. And what that meant is they have neither of the antibodies because both of the antibodies, sorry, both the antigens, there we got them, so neither would be foreign. All right, and my last person is type O. My last person is type O. Type O had neither the A antigen nor the B antigen. So both of these antigens would be foreign to this person. So in their plasma, they've got both of the varieties of antibodies, anti-A and anti-B. All right, this is good, fun stuff. Okay, so couple other little things here. Number one, whoops. Number one, my antibodies here, these are actually weird antibodies. These antibodies are known as preformed antibodies. Now, most antibodies work in, in your body. Most of them work. You make them after you've been exposed to something foreign. So like if you've never been exposed to tuberculosis, you wouldn't have antibodies for tuberculosis. 
So normally you make antibodies upon exposure, but these blood type ones are weird. They're preformed. What that means is they're made without exposure. So these are like guaranteed antibodies that you're gonna have. Most antibodies you make them when you're exposed to a foreign thing. These ones you got them even without being exposed. Okay, last thing I want to say here before I keep going, last item, all right, is that check out my antibody here. This anti anti B. Um, you see this little spot right here? Boop, boop. This little spot right here, and right there, right there, and right there. So that is where the antibody protein would grab on to the antigen. So my anti-B antibody, well, how many antigens could he grab onto? Well, one, two, three, four, five. He could grab onto five. So what you could do is imagine, use that imagination, and imagine that he has grabbed onto five red blood cells. Now, we're not drawing things to scale here. Red blood cells are bigger than antibodies, but just for illustrative purposes, he has grabbed onto five red blood cells. What that means is he has clumped together red blood cells. A clump of red blood cells, a clump of red blood cells, clump of erythrocytes, is known as an agglutination. So what antibodies are really doing is they are agglutinating foreign things, in this case, red blood cells. And by agglutinating foreign things, well, you've kind of like locked them together and trapped them. You've also made them appear delicious to macrophages, which are the big eater cells that are part of your immune system. So... Antibodies are really good at binding specific things, but also at agglutinating, like clumping them together. All right, all right. So just a little um, summing up here. If we are type A, starting over here, we're type A. If we look at our red blood cell, what antigen do we see? We see the A antigen. There is no B antigen, which means in our plasma, we have the anti-B antibody, which attacks, or better word, agglutinates the B antigens. Similarly, if we go to someone who is type B, someone who is type B has the B antigen, but no A. Say so at the B antigen, but no A. So because they have no A, they would have anti-A antibodies, which attack or agglutinate the A antigen. Onward. Type AB. Both the A and both the A and the B antigens, both of them. So neither antibody. You don't want to attack yourself, right? Neither antibody. Now, lastly, type O. Someone who's type O. They have neither A nor B, neither one of them, so they have both of the antibodies. All right. You should know this table. Like for the blood type, you should know what antigen and what antibodies. Make yourself flashcards for this. All right. Now, this picture is all about safe donations. Okay? Safe blood donations. All right. One of the things you can do is you can donate. I'm never going to write this out because I don't want to write a whole sentence. But you can always donate to two people. Okay. You can always donate to, let me write donate here. You can always donate to yourself. So what that means is you can donate to your obviously yourself or to someone who has the same exact blood type. So if you're type O, you can donate to someone else who's type O. 
If you're type A, you can donate to someone who's type A. If you're type AB, you can donate to someone who's type AB. If you're B, you can donate to someone who's type B. So you can always donate to yourself. And you can also always donate to AB. Notice how everybody has an arrow going to AB. All right, so this is a just good golden rule here. You can donate to yourself and you can donate to AB. Obviously, you can donate to yourself because it's the exact same. There's no chance of it being foreign. But why can you donate to someone who's AB? Well, recall, someone who's AB has no, no what? No what? No antibodies. So someone who's, who's AB doesn't have either the anti-A or the anti-B antibodies. So there's nothing they can do any attacking. So you can always donate to yourself. You can always donate to AB. Excellent. Now you can always you can always receive from two people as well. You can always receive from yourself. Again, that just makes perfect, beautiful sense. Look how everybody is receiving from themselves. You can also receive from type O. Notice how type O is going to everyone. Now, why? Well, if you're type O, you don't have either of those antigens. So there's nothing that can be recognized as being foreign. So type AB has neither antibody, so they're really good at getting blood. Type O has neither antigen, so they're really good at donating blood. All right, excellent, excellent. So let's keep going. Um, just an another picture here, but it's going to add something new to the mix. What I want you to notice here, first of all, is I've got four red blood cells up top. I got four red blood cells down below. But now, in my blood type for each person, I not only have my letters, but I also have a symbol. All right, if someone is type O, they don't have the A or the B. So I don't see an A or a B here. So this person's type O, they don't have the A or the B. But this person down here has something new. This person down here has something called the RH antigen. So if you have the RH antigen, actually, let's bring that up. If you have the RH antigen, you get a plus. If you have the RH antigen, you get a plus. Notice how everybody down here at the plus, everybody has the RH antigen. O plus, O means no A, no B. Plus means RH. A plus, the A means you got the A antigen. Plus means you got the RH. B plus, B means you got the B antigen. Plus means you got the RH. A, B plus, you're going to have all three, the A antigen, the B antigen, and the RH. Now, if you don't have the RH antigen, so nobody up here has it, so everybody up here is going to be negative. By the way, the RH antigen is also referred to as the D antigen. So you should know those two terms and know that they are interchangeable. Okay. Excellent. Um, oh, one more quick thing. The RH antigen is present on all these guys, right? Right? So here's a question for you. Which of these groups would have, which of these groups would contain anti-RH antibodies? Would it be my negative people or my positive people? Well, let's figure this out. That says antibodies right there, okay? Let's figure this out. What are these guys going to do? They're going to attack. These antibodies are going to attack the RH antigen. 
So what is, who's going to have them? Well, the pluses can't have them. You can't have the antigen and the antibody that attacks it. So my minuses, they and they alone are going to have the antibodies. But let me add something else. These antibodies are not preformed. They're not preformed. Remember, the anti-A and anti-Bs were preformed. Those guys were made without exposure. The anti-RHs are only made upon exposure. Exposure to what? Exposure to what? Exposure to that antigen. All right, so if you're negative, you lack the RH antigen but you have the capacity to make the Rh antibody. If you're positive, you got the Rh antigen and you will never have the antibody. Okay, this is good stuff. One more thing about donation. Negative people can always give to negative people. Positive people can always give to positive people. But one little added wrinkle, if you're negative, you can give to somebody who's positive. Let me go back for a second. Look at the person who's negative. There's nothing on there to be attacked. So the person who is O negative is, in fact, the best one at giving blood. The person who is O negative is known as our universal donor. They're giving blood to all the other types. If you're AB positive, you have all three antigens, so you can't have any of the three antibodies. So if you are AB positive, you are known as the universal recipient. Two more flashcards that you need to make right there. Okay, excellent. And now, let's talk briefly about what you're actually going to do in lab. In lab, you're going to get four unknown blood types, so four unknown blood samples, and you're going to get three known samples of antibodies. So, like, if you can read it, this says anti-A antiserum. This says anti-B antiserum. This says anti-RH antiserum. So what you're going to do is for each of these blood samples, you're going to get a little tray. It's got three little spots in it, three little dips, and it actually, it's hard to read, but it says A, it says B, and it says RH. And you're going to put blood in each of these three little wells. Then after you put blood in each of those three wells, you're going to put a different antibody. You're going to put some anti-A's in here, some anti-B's in here and some anti-RHs in here, okay? Now remember, anti-A's grab onto the A antigen and cause agglutination. Anti-B's grab onto the B antigen and cause agglutination. Anti-RHs grab onto the RH antigen and cause agglutination. So what you're then going to do is look and see if you can see agglutination. If there's agglutination in this A well here, and you know you put the anti-A antibodies in it, that means the blood must have supplied the A antigen. So if you see agglutination in any of these wells, like if I see it here, I know the blood had the A antigen. If I see it here, I know the blood had the B antigen. If I see it here, I know the blood had the RH antigen. Let's look at a bunch of examples of this. All right. Suppose your tray looked like this. You had agglutination in A and in B. Well, that means that the A antigen, the A antigen must have been present because I see agglutination here. But I also see it here, which means the B antigen must have been present, but none here which means that no RH. So this person would be AB negative. 
All right, what about this person? Well, neither A nor B, that means they're type O, but now they have agglutination here, which means they have the RH antigen, which means they are positive. What about this guy? He's got agglutination in the A well, so that means his blood had the A antigen, but no B and no RH. So he's going to be A negative. If you have agglutination in, oh, my, what I want you to do is draw. Ah, oh, come on. Speaking of draw, I need to hit my drawing button. I want you to draw eight of these trays. Draw eight of the trays. One for O positive, one for O negative, one for A positive, one for A negative, B positive and negative, AB positive and negative. And draw the agglutination pattern that you would see for each of these eight. Because I guarantee to you, you're going to get questions like that on your exam. If you're not sure, or you want to check your work, you know, show me or show your, find your, your teacher and show, show them to them. Okay? And with that, folks, we are done with blood typing. So now what I want to do is talk about our second blood test. Our second blood test is this thing called the hematocrit. Now, in order to take this measurement, we need a blood sample. So in this case, someone has pricked their finger. By the way, hematocrit literally means blood measurement, which isn't too specific, is it? So they pricked their finger. They're getting a blood sample. They're putting it in a machine which maybe you're familiar with, it is called a centrifuge. And that centrifuge is going to spin really fast. When blood spins really fast, the components in it separate by density. And it, we end up with three areas, a light colored one at the top, which contains the plasma, a very tiny middle region, which is where I'll have my white blood cells and my platelets. And this middle region is actually known as the buffy layer or buffy coat. Bottom, we got our red blood cells, our erythrocytes. That's the one we're most interested in right now, okay? So we got to do this to figure out a hematocrit. So <clears throat> we had some blood here. We centrifuged it, and we got plasma, buffy coat with the WBCs and platelets, then the red blood cells down here. Now, let me define hematocrit for you. And I'm just going to abbreviate hematocrit HCT because that's how it's often abbreviated. Hematocrit is the percentage of whole blood. That says whole right there. It looks kind of like, I don't know what it looks like. It's a percentage of whole blood occupied, occupied by packed, red blood cells. All right, so to figure this out, what I could do is I could bust out my handy ruler. I could measure from the top of my blood to the bottom of my blood. That would be the whole blood, right? And I got a measurement of 37. Then I could also measure my red blood cells. With my ruler, I'd measure from the top of the red to the bottom of the red and get 18. Well, I know to, to figure out a percentage, like if I want to know X is what percent of Y, I divide X by Y, and then because it's a percent, I times it by 100. Well, in this case, we want to know the percentage of whole blood, so we're going to put that in the bottom. I always put the bigger number on the bottom here. And we're going to put the whole blood in the top, or the red blood cells in the top, times it by 100. So we get 18 over 37 times 100. We bust out our calculator. I don't have a calculator on me right now, but I'm guessing it's around 48%. 18 divided by 37 times 100. All right. That is how we do hematocrit. So 
hematocrit is a, a quick way of telling us about our red blood cells, whether we have enough or too many or too few. Um, generally, if you're between, you know, 42 to 56, that's normal for a guy. If you're between like 38 to 46, that's normal for a, a um, woman. Um, these numbers vary a little bit. So that is a quick way to measure red blood cells. All right. If you have a hematocrit that is too low, that is called anemia. And you are not going to be able to carry oxygen properly to your working tissues. If you have a hematocrit that's too high, that's called polycythemia. And literally many blood cells, many cells of blood. And that actually makes it hard to move blood because the blood gets too thick or viscous. Okay. Almost done, folks. Which one of these two people here would be the anemic one, which would be the polycythemic one? Quick question for you. All right. Now I'm showing you this card here. Whoops. I didn't mean to jump so far ahead. I'm showing you this card here. You can also use this card to figure out hematocrit. What you would do is you would take the tube. Okay, whoops. You would take the tube that had the red, that had the blood in it, and you would arrange the tube so that the base of the red blood cells intersects the zero line. So I'm going to draw a tube here, okay? And my tube is actually going to be pretty, pretty large. But just bear with me for a second here, and I apologize for the lack of straight line there. That's a weird looking tube. I know, I know. And so what you're going to do is you're going to place the tube such that the bottom of the red blood cells, I'm going to make right there the bottom of my red blood cells. I'm going to make right here the top of my red blood cells, okay? So this is my red blood cells in here. Now the bottom of the tube had the base of the red cells intersect the zero line. The top of the tube, okay, not the top of the tube, the top of the plasma is going to intersect with the 100 line. So I'm going to make sure my plasma intersects at the top of it with the 100 line. This would be empty space up here. This would have actually like clay or some sort of stopper material in here. So my buffy coat, the tiny buffy coat we made, be in between there. It's so little, I just basically am going to ignore it. All right. Just going to neaten that up a little bit. Yeah, make it a little more colorful. That's fine. Um, so now what you do, and this is a math-free way to measure the um, hematocrit, is you just look at where the top of the red is and you go across. It doesn't matter which direction you go. But in both cases here, the hematocrit is around 40%. You're done. There is no math ne necessary with this. All you do is line it up so that the bottom of the red is on zero, top of the yellow is on 100, and you just read the top of the red. All right, in lab, the cards you get actually have a pair of shapes on them because depending on the size of your tube, you might need to use one or the other. But same idea. Here are some examples here. And so remember, like, let's just look at this one right here. Bottom of the red on the zero line, top of the plasma on the 100 line. We're at a little under 40%, around 38% for that person right there. All right, I guarantee you're going to get a blood sample on your exam. You might have to use the ruler method or the card method. You won't be able to choose, probably. But you'll be able, you know, one will be available for you. All right, on that note, this was fantastic. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you did, appreciate that. If you have questions, feel free to give me a shout, either in person or via email. Um, see you later.